Hello everyone, welcome to another webinar on the extensions of OpenLM. Today we will go over all the extended parts of OpenLM as most of you probably know already everything that the OpenLM core product has to offer. Uh, just a quick recap, the core product means monitoring and reporting, such as the license server report, the license usage report that you might know, utilization, and so on. But today I will not be going over them. I will be going over all the extra features that OpenLM can give you. So let's go over them one by one. There are a few extensions. I'm not going to uh, show everyone, every one of them. Some I'm going to show, some I'm just going to talk about. So first of all, <clears throat> besides the monitoring part of OpenLM, besides the reports of OpenLM, OpenLM can help you get the system to be much more automatic with more managerial capabilities. Now, one thing that makes the <clears throat> usage of OpenLM much more automatic is, for one, an extension called the rules, the alerts extension. The alerts extension is an extension which allows you to get notified when certain criteria are met inside your system. For example, you can see here that you can get notified by email, by, by SMS, by just uh, having an alert here in the interface. You can get notified when a licensed server is not responding. For example, you get notified on it and you run a broker command to start the server. Um, you can get notified when a usage percentage goes over a certain amount. That means that if I have 100 licenses and I have like 25 users, concurrent usage of 95 right now, then it's over 90 and I will get notified. I will get notified about the fact that the license is about to be maxed out. Now this can be 90, it can be whatever you choose. Next, we have the duplicate license usage. You can get notified when a user pulls two instances of the same license. You can get notified when a license is about to expire. For example, here it's uh, 14 days, but you can get notified on any time span you'd like, so you'd know that you need to do something about it. You need to go and buy more licenses. Users not in default group and not in a project. If you have uh, your users caught up all in groups and they're all grouped and they're all under a project, then any user working outside the group or project is an unauthorized usage. You can get notified about that. Now regarding the groups, I will talk about this in a moment because it incorporates another extension that we have, the LDAP or Active Directory extension. <clears throat> so those groups can come from the Active Directory itself. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The next condition that you can get notified on is a usage period. For example, let's say that a user uh, pull the license and is using now for more than like 12 hours, something like that. A user with more than 12 hours of usage time for that session, well, probably is not there anymore. Probably he went home, he went on a meeting, uh, he's not there. So you can go and shut off his workstation, retrieve his license somehow, and you can get notified so you can take action. And the last one tells you if there's something wrong with the feature itself, with the license server. Because let's say that the license server is responding, everything seems to be good, 
but the maximum number of denials uh, goes over a certain threshold for a, 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 a certain time span. Meaning, let's say that I'm, uh, I get a thousand denials in one minute. Then, well, something is wrong with the system. The license server might be up, but something is wrong with the system because people are getting denied. So maybe a license file is um, misused. Maybe there's an error in the license file. Maybe the license is expired. You don't know, but you can get notified and know that, oh, I have uh, 10 denials in two minutes for this feature, it's too much. So you can, you can know that something's up. Now you can see that this helps a lot with uh, getting notified and uh, pretty much having the OpenLM system hands off so it can notify you when certain stuff are happening and you won't have to go in and check everything. So the next extensions that I want to talk about they help make OpenLM enterprise ready. Now, what does that mean, enterprise ready? That means that um, most organizations, mainly big organizations, they search for a few things. One is the Active Directory synchronization. Now, most of you probably have Active Directories. The Active Directory holds users, it holds groups, computers, it holds all the details regarding your organization and the employees of their, that organization. So OpenLM allows you to pull those users from your Active Directory and group them in a few ways which I will demonstrate now. You can get those users, for example, under this node, get the users, sync only active users, uh, and then you can set the rule for creating a new group. You can either just pull all the users and not create a new group. You can ha have all the groups that you pulled under that node to be within a group that you give it a name, for example, Germany sales. So all the users under this node will be put into Germany sales group in OpenLM. Hierarchy, you can um, <clears throat> group users by the hierarchy. So the name of the OU will be the name of the new group in the exact hierarchy, or you can group users by their attribute. For example, department can be an attribute and uh, for example sales every user that has sales in it in his attri uh, department attribute will uh, will be under the group sales inside openlm the next extension that makes openlm enterprise ready is the roles and permissions extension roles and permissions extension lets you set different views to different users using a username and password, but it can also be the same username and password taken from the Active Directory. It can be used uh, with the Windows authentication me mechanism, the IIS. So let's take a look at the, um, what does that mean? What is a, a, a role? So we can, for example, take the admin role and take a look inside it. So you see that uh, some values are allowed and some, in, some are denied. For example, this server is denied from view. So the users that will be under this role, the admin OU template, they will not be able to see all these different license servers. You, we can set also for them not to see certain reports or get specific reports. The next extension that I want to talk about is a solution to a problem some clients are having. If, if you are using FlexLM or maybe DSLS, you probably know the options file and what it can do. So the options file, you can set different users or different groups to reserve different licenses, include or ex exclude different uh, users from different licenses. 
<clears throat> you can reserve licenses for for hosts group for different IPs and so on but it's all text-based like <clears throat> this is an options file an, a FlexLM options file it's not a part of OpenLM yet so this file is very hard to create it's very prone to human error because as you see it's uh, well just a lot of text without a lot of um, explanation. Now, there is a, a issue where this, for example, exclude has to come after group, and there are many different rules that have to, to apply in order for the options file to actually work. Now, the FlexLM doesn't even tell you that your, that your options file is wrong. So, OpenLM gives you an interface that, that allows you to create this exact uh, options file. So you can create it just using a select, click here, click there, and that's it. No need to write down the actual text of it because writing down the text may cause uh, issues, syntax problems, maybe typos. So this happens a lot. And if you have huge options file and if you have many license servers then you might uh, find yourself uh, uh, employing one man to do only options files so this interface can replace that man so let me give you an example let's go to ArcGIS for example I'll get the grid and let's say that I want to add a group to grid Let's say group USA, USA server, let's say, server team. And I want to include them in that license. So I'll just click Save. And when I click on the preview, we'll be able to see them here. Include grid group USA server. So once we click Deploy, it deploys all the changes to the license server directly, to the license manager directly. Now I want to talk about uh, a few things before I move on to the OpenLM agent and the different tiers of the OpenLM agent. So first of all, OpenLM, the OpenLM server has a full API so you can connect uh, the, you can get the OpenLM information to any interface that you'd like. OpenLM connects to external databases, which is uh, MySQL and uh, a SQL server. And also you're able to log in using your Windows authentication um, user. Now I wanna show you what the active what the agent can do now most of you probably don't know about the agent but <clears throat> the agent sits on the workstation of the engineer and it lets you the as the admin it lets you have uh, many capabilities f anything from monitoring to controlling their license usage so let's go over the different tiers of the agent. So there are four tiers. The first tier is the free tier. It's part of the core. Uh, it's, I know we're doing extensions now, but I want to give you all the tiers of the agent. So the first tier allows users to understand what's going on with their licenses. Now, when I say users, I mean end users, the engineers themselves. For example, I'm an engineer and I need ArcGIS Publisher. So I see it's total 15, used 15. So I can click on that and I see that Alexis is using and Charles is using. And keep in mind that I am, as of now, an end user, an engineer. So I can see that Alexis is using from this time and I can call her up. I can tell her, hey, I need the license. Can you release it? Do you, re do you need it right now? So they can 
they can pretty much uh, release licenses for themselves. This gives them uh, a list of who is using, what they're using, and when they started. The second tier of the agent allows you to track the idle time of a certain application. So if I open AutoCAD right here and I work with it, then it's not idle because I'm working with it. It has a higher CPU, it has memory usage. We're working with it. But if we're not working with it, or if it's even minimized or something, then the session itself is idle. He's not working on the machine. He can, uh, I don't know, be on Facebook. He can be in a meeting. He can be just doing something else. Maybe he went home. So the second tier of the uh, agent, meaning uh, the actual usage extension, allows you to see the idle time per, um, per session. So let's see how it looks like. Now keep in mind that the system, <clears throat> it updates about minute by minute. So each change we do, we will have to wait about a minute. So we open AutoCAD and we can see it here in our license server. And uh, we'll be able to see <clears throat> the idle time of that session. Now, how, how can you use that? Let's say that you have a user that uh, constantly gets a license and just hogs it, just keeps it uh, on his machine and that's it. So actually that was me in my last, my, my last job. I, pulled, I used to come to the office, I pulled a license and then I just uh, I left it there uh, for, for days, for weeks until they, they caught on. So actual usage extension allows the, um, the admin to know that the end user is misusing the license. He's like creating lower utilization to the license because it's taken, but it's not used. So the utilization of it is much, much lower and the availability uh, seriously, seriously drops. So once you know what's going on with uh, with your licenses with your users you'll be able to set their uh, behavior and tell them uh, let them know that uh, they are using uh, for their idling for too long maybe you see that they're idling and you just uh, go up to their machine and and maybe just close their their workstation uh, maybe just release the license or you can you can do a bunch of things with the actual usage, or you can actually uh, release the license yourself and close the application yourself as an admin, as the license admin. So if we take a look right here, we can see that we're about two minutes into the idle period. We got the uh, application idle period, about two minutes. We got a workstation idle period for about uh, 30 seconds. And we can even get it as a graph. We got the idle period right here. Now let's say that uh, we want to release his license. We see, okay, he is idle for, for a while. Well, I want to close his application remotely. So we use the next tier of the OpenLM agent called the active agent to release the license. So if I click here, close app, yes, now a minute, a minute or two will pass and we will see, oh, it's already happened. So you see that the application itself was closed. The AutoCAD right here was closed. And I got a message right here saying that uh, OpenLM agent has recently closed AutoCAD.exe at system administrator's request. Because I clicked close, it sent out a remote uh, signal to the broker and to the agent to release that license and close that application. Now you can also close the application via uh, the idle time itself. So you can set an idle time threshold 
that will release the application, will close the application once the license has been, uh, uh, it will close the application once the uh, idle time has gone over a certain threshold. For example, you can set that if someone is not using the application for over, over an hour, then closes application. Now, the save and close means that the uh, uh, work is saved and then the application is closed. If it's new work without a save file yet, then it saves it to a temp folder. But if it's work already ongoing with, with a, a file there, then it will simply save to the file. Now this functionality, the, close, the save and close functionality, is limited to Autodesk, ArcGIS, MATLAB, and SOLIDWORKS. Now uh, these are like the top four applications which use the save and close. If you have a FlexLM license manager, but it's not one of the big four, uh, let's say that it's NX, NX software, then you can suspend the NX software, meaning that it suspends the application and releases the license. So the user will not be able to get the license, um, will not be able to open the application if there are no licenses available. So the application itself becomes frozen, the license is released back into the pool, and the user can ask for uh, for the license back once it starts uh, working with the application. Now let's say that it's you're not using FlexLM, you're not using one of the big four, but you still want that capability. So you will be able to set uh, a different procedures on the uh, workstation. For example, Let's say that it's an application that uses, I don't know, a DSLS license manager or any other type of license manager. So you can set up the agent to simply kill the application once the idle time threshold has uh, been reached. For example, you can set, you can say that if the if a session has gone over five hours of idle time then simply kill the application. I don't care what he has saved, if he it did work with it or not, just kill the application. But again, this is uh, uh, an extreme method and it's used only if it's not FlexLM, uh, not a FlexLM license manager. And it can also be used on applications which are not managed by a license manager. Now let me, let me explain. As we've seen, the, the uh, uh, four tiers of the OpenLM agent, we've seen three of them. One is the license usage screen that the uh, users get. The second is the actual usage extension that shows you how long people have been idling with the application. The third tier that actually closes the application or suspends the application. And the fourth tier that allows you to, first of all, track many different types of licenses. So it can monitor floating licenses as well as uh, named, or node locked, single used, every type of license can be monitored by the OpenLM App Manager. Now the OpenLM App Manager, let me open that up. As I said, it allows you to track any type of application. It can be a licensed application, it can be a floating license application, a named license, or even with no license at all. So if you take a look here, you can see that I have uh, Autodesk. Now this, these are named licenses. I have Photoshop right here, um, Visual Studio, and I even have PZIP, which is like Notepad or something, just to show you that it can monitor anything, any application with a process. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, okay, but why do I need to track um, 
named licenses like named license one guy one name one license that's it um, but let's say that you have 50 named licenses and out of the 50 only two people are using and out of those two people one of them is using just one hour a week so if that that man is using one hour a week he can be in the floating license pool he doesn't need a named license you can give the named license to someone from the floating license pool that actually needs it someone that uh, works 10 hours a day every day needs the application so then it will be cheaper for you to just give him a named license and get the one from the name license and put him in the floating license pool because he's only using like one hour a week or something so this this is why you need uh, it will be better for you to also monitor applications which are not floating now for example of uh, photoshop which is uh, per machine you just buy the application and install it on a machine and that's it you can track how many machines are actually using it so you'd know uh, if there's a new user if you can just take it from another machine that's not using it or maybe you can uh, maybe you can just give him the licenses of the uh, that Photoshop or maybe give him another or maybe buy new licenses so this gives you a lot of insight regarding your license usage doesn't matter which license it is uh, the named uh, node lock doesn't matter another thing that the app manager is able to do is uh, you'll be able to define different criteria <clears throat> you'll be able to define different criteria for the license usage meaning that you can define when people uh, will pull a license what they will use who is able to use what and so on so for example you can set a condition uh, to deny users from using any any other version than 2017 Autodesk 2017 or you can uh, allow users to use uh, in their own times in their own uh, work working hours for example you can set up uh, USA to only be able to get the license in USA working hours and China in China working hours so you can divide your licenses you can use the same licenses on the whole world on the whole all, all installments that you have so let's take a look at what can be done here exactly so you can select the application the uh, version the time you can select a specific username a specific workstation or maybe a specific group of users so let's demonstrate how it actually works um, now let's say if it's autodesk and it's 2017 and the time is after 8 and before 9 in the morning uh, then deny the application so we'll save it and now when we pull license we should get denied so we click it and we were not able to pull the application we got an error here saying that access denied due to normal USA working hours rule now this is this rule right here and it's denied if I allow it then I'll be able to pull a license I allowed it so now the application opens up so it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of options right here you can set this group to only be able to see uh, to use Autodesk 2017 another group that only needs to use ArcGIS for example will only be able to use ArcGIS uh, now it's uh, let, let's take a look at all the different configurations that we can have so you can set it by the time by the application itself by the user workstation group version and vendor so you can define different rules and string different rules together to uh, pretty much allocate your licenses differently
pretty much do the same as the uh, options file does, but for every application, all types of applications, not only FlexLM, not only uh, licensed application, not only floating license application, just about anything. If it has a process running on the workstation, then it, it works with the app manager, no problem. And lastly, I want to go over the OpenLM reporting hub. Now, uh, as I see here, I think that none of you are using the OpenLM reporting hub, but we have um, now more and more clients purchasing the reporting hub and using it. Now, sometimes users, uh, well, they say that the OpenLM embedded reports in the core product is, uh, it's simply not enough. It's not enough for them and they need more. They need an extra column. They need to aggregate the data differently. They need a different report. They want a different dashboard. So uh, they have, each client has their own requests and their own report that they need or, or management needs. So the OpenLM reporting hub gives those clients just that. It gives you the ability to create your own reports, create your own dashboards with ease, just by a drag and drop interface, which is very simple. Now, before I move on to, to more technical details, the OpenRL Reporting Hub itself is simply a data engine that gets data from the source database and compiles it into a destination database, into a reporting database. It gets a, it gets the goes out to the OpenLM source database and creates a reporting database. The what you're seeing here is a BI tool, business intelligence tool. There are many business intelligence tools. There, there's uh, Power BI, Click, Seasense. Uh, Tableau, many different types. We use Power BI because we prefer, prefer it. It's the most professional one. Now, the any BI tool can be used on it. Um, and the reporting database itself is structured in a manner which is very, very easy to understand. It's very user friendly. Now, we, before we go on um, to more technical issues, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, then why can't I just connect directly to the OpenLM database, the source database? So why do I need to connect to the reporting database? So why can't I connect directly to the uh, source database? Well, because the source database, uh, it's pretty much, uh, pretty much empty for human hand, for human eyes meaning that it holds all the information but it holds it in a format that the interface the easy admin can understand for example uh, you will not be able to see session duration in the database you will not find concurrent usage in the database denials you will barely have so the etl the uh, data engine puts the, it calculates the data, it aggregates the data and cuts up the data. So it will, the end result will be something that you can work with. It has all the dimensions and measures that you need. It doesn't have 116 different tables that will confuse you. It doesn't have a flat aggregation. It has uh, many different types of aggregations. Now, what what does the uh, what does the reporting hub give you? What is the resulting database structure? So first of all, you can see on the right here that I have the structure set up as dimensions and measures. Now dimension is something uh, that you cannot really count. You cannot really summarize, maximize. It's not not value really. Inside calendar dimension, for example, we have the date, the days, it's a day of the week, day of the month. Inside user dimension, we got everything regarding the user, username, office, description, email, everything. But you see that nothing can be uh, summed up, nothing can be maximized, nothing can be calculated really. 
uh, in the dimensions because dimensions are basically your x-axis now the measures they give you your y-axis. They give you uh, the session duration, the denials, <clears throat> the uh, uh, concurrent usage, the license quantity, the idle time. So it's structured in three different formats, raw, aggregated, and daily, where raw is pretty much the same as it is in the OpenRM database, just with all the fields that you need. Aggregated is uh, feature daily usage. You can select a feature and, and show its usage, uh, either session duration or concurrent usage. And daily, concurrent usage and daily license quantity, meaning the daily measures, uh, they allow you to su uh, summarize different license servers together and, and many features together. And you can aggregate even the whole database if you want. Now, what are we seeing here? What is this? Now, this is an interface, a dashboard, that was created in about 10 minutes. It's very simple to create a dashboard. Uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, uh, yeah, right. But really, it's that simple. Let's create a new one. Let's create a new page. And let's say that we want to see uh, the, we're going to see a, a bar chart of session duration per user. So we just click on the bar chart. Let's make it bigger. Let's get the users, get the username. And as you see, I just drag it inside. That's it. Now I'll go to session duration because I want the session duration per user. And I just drag the usage time inside. Now that's it, the report is ready. I can sort it by the usage time, and then I see the most uh, uh, using users. Now let's say that I wanna drill down and see which workstations uh, each one have be, has been working with. So I can drill down inside this user, for example, and see that he has been using three different workstations. Let's say that I want I want to see the uh, groups and the users within the groups. So I'll just put the group right here. And let's say that I want to drill down inside this group. Then I see all the users inside this, uh, this group and I can drill down even more to see this user, which workstations he's been working on and so on. Now this is endless. I can do it with the uh, license right here, you have the license feature, vendor, server, with packages, with different aggregations of time, whatever you choose. Now, I'm not going to go uh, deeper into it. If you would like to know more about the reporting hub, if you would like to receive uh, a, a, an evaluation period of the reporting hub or any of the extensions that you saw, you just contact sales and we'll set you up with an evaluation version of the reporting hub. Now the reporting hub, the evaluation uh, period is about two months. Uh, then you'll be able to know if everything works for you, if it's okay, uh, because as you can see, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can create new measures, even like you're seeing here, the uh, uh, license utilization. License utilization is a measure that's non-existent in the database, but it can be created using a simple, uh, it's like an Excel, um, it's like an Excel function. Let me open up a function right here. And you'll see that I created a calculated measure from two different uh, fields. So for example, you got the uh, usage sum usage time minus, minus sum idle time. So this gives me the actual usage. But so you can see it's just like an Excel, uh, just like an Excel function. It's very easy, very simple. You can create many different uh, functions on top of functions. Uh, so it's pretty much endless. Um, there is a lot of uh, documented information about the BI tools. If you use Power BI, then there's a lot of documented documentation and videos and tutorials and everything. Uh, and, and that's about it. Um, 
we use Power BI because we we find it uh, the best BI out there. Uh, but what you get mainly is the ETL itself and the resulting data structure, which is updated each night. Each each night the ETL runs, gets the data to the re, um, resulting reporting database, <coughs> and that's it. When you um, when you sit at your workstation, you want to start creating a report, so you just refresh and that's it. Now this is a great tool either for just giving out, handing out reports or dashboards to different managers and so on, or you can just ask many different questions. For example, your boss walks up to you and tells you, uh, I need the uh, license utilization for this and that feature, for this and that server. I want it done by users and I want it done by, I don't know, and I want it as a scatter chart. Now, we don't have that inside OpenLM, but you, but the uh, BI here can, can give it to you, no problem. So any request that you get, you can create, or any um, anything that you thought, uh, how are my licenses doing right here, or, or then, or at that time, or for that user, or everything, you can get different, uh, different uh, information, and you can get different insights on your data, and you can do it, as I said, as reports, as dashboards, or even just go online, go on it, and just play with it, see what you need, get what you need from it. So, so this is about it. Uh, we've talked about the different extensions of OpenLM. Just to, just as a quick recap, we talked about um, we talked about the alerts extension which notifies you when certain criteria are met we've seen the ldap extension <clears throat> you've seen the ldap extension that which allows you to get users from your active directory and group them we've seen the roles extension which allows you to set different views to different users of openlm the options file extension which allows you to create different options file using the interface and just push them to the license manager. And then we took a look at the all the tiers of the agent. Uh, we had the first tier, which is the core tier, the actual usage tier, which allows you to get the idle time for, for all the sessions, the active agent tier, which allows you to close applications after they've been pulled, and the app manager, which allows you to uh, restrict applications from being opened, and these applications can be with any type of license, uh, named, node locked, floating, uh, no license at all, whatever. And lastly, we saw the reporting hub. We saw how easy it is to create a new uh, database, a new dashboard. We took a, a, a short look on how to create a new report. Uh, but if you would like to know more about any of the different uh, different extensions that you've seen today, uh, just send an email to support at openlm.com and we'll be happy to help. We'll be happy to answer, uh, install an evaluation version for each and every one of the, of the extension. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you guys for uh, giving me some of your time. I hope it was informative. I hope uh, so some of you learned something that they didn't know. And again, if you have any issues, if you have any questions, send an email to support at openlm.com. <clears throat> you can even uh, call us up in the chat window inside the OpenLM website. Now I have a question here. One moment. Oh, it's not a question. Um, you're most welcome, Rochislav. Okay, thanks guys. Have a great day.